everyone, how are you keeping? Well, I hope. Today's video is all about just inking up your eyebrows and um, really kind of um, getting to grips with tight lining because these are really subtle ways that you can define and enhance your features without you really looking like you've got much makeup on. And if you are someone who has really pale eyebrows, non-existent eyebrows, or you've lost a lot of eyebrows and they're quite sparse, and when you put a cold pencil on, it kind of just looks like two separate things, it doesn't look natural, then using one of the inks is a really, really great way of um, doing this. Painting in little ink brows, so really, really fine, delicate hairs to fill in your eyebrows. And as you know, with my eyebrows, they are a bit sparse and haphazard, so this will really kind of help and give them a very natural look. Um, so before I start with my eyebrows, I'm going to use a little bit of the um, eyelid base by Sensei which is slightly metallic. Just put it on first and it creates just a really nice base. And I'm just putting this on because I'm going to be using some gel liner um, and a little bit of liquid liner and I don't want to use anything else on my eyes apart from that. So I don't want any of the base to transfer and I just want the skin to kind of be like super, super soft and um, perfected before I start fiddling around with my eyeliners because you know what it's like once they start moving, it's hard to get that smooth line again. So a little bit of that nice base, there's a lovely cooling effect to the eye and it'll give a lovely finish. Great before you do eyeshadow, obviously, but for me, um, I just want to use it before the liner. And um, by Terry, um, a lovely hyaluronic powder, and this is O2O. Oh, well, let me just check if I've got that right. No, it's 100, it's fair. And again, I'm obsessed with textures and how mm, makeup feels. It's very important to me that it feels as lovely as it might look. So this area is nice and dry and smooth and matte. So this is perfect if you want to ink up your brows because if you've got a moisturized skin or you've put lots of serum on or SPF and then you try and ink your brow, it just slides around and maybe you've tried that before with a cold pencil or an ink and you've been dissatisfied with the results because you sort of put it on and it, doesn't really do what you'd hoped, or maybe you'd watch tutorials and it just doesn't look as clean and as polished. That's probably because the surface of your eye area and your eyebrow is not smooth and dry. And the same for the tight lining. And I think in situations like this, where you kind of want to get full impact with um, little effort, then this is a really, really good look. Okay, so I'm going to be using Glossier. One thing I would say that I actually store this in a pen pot down. Um, it's a great colour. This is blonde, um, but you have to kind of keep shaking it through like most of them. Um, and if you just keep it down like this, it's just easier when you come to apply the product. So let me just go a little bit closer. So I'm just going to take the tip and very gently, I'm going to build in the missing hairs. And it's really that simple. So you don't get that dense finish that you get when you use a cold pencil. You can make it slightly irregular so it looks natural if you don't like to have a drawn in brow. If you've got any spaces maybe where you've over plucked then you can also use the ink just to fill in those spaces. So just bringing it through just my little hole here if I just fill in that arch it just gives me a much more full defined brow and just smooth that line off there. That probably took over about 30 seconds and I think that's a really really lovely effect that looks soft and natural. I'm just going to take a cotton bud, I'm just going to soften that there, I don't want that coming down too far, always always trying to lift and elevate and for me that's just a smidgen too far down for that eyebrow. So let's do the other side. I may just brush this through first and I'll start filling in. Just trying to do it so you can see what I'm doing as well. Very gently. My touch is super, super light. And then really pulling out the brow here elongating it, making sure that it's flattering to my eye shape. 
I promise you if you've tried this before and you haven't done the first step that I did, making the skin really soft and matte, and by using those two products, especially the, the By Terry Hyaluronic Powder, it makes such a difference. It doesn't dry your skin, um, but it just creates a lovely soft matte base for the ink to sit on beautifully. So I'm just sort of redefining and re-enhancing each hair. So it's just like delicate microblading really that isn't permanent. And if you have microblading and you just want to add it up a little bit or get an idea of what microblading would look, then this is a nice option to have. I think that's balance and it's just really soft, feathery, um, and I guarantee this this is a lovely shade that you will be able to just add a little bit of fullness to your eyebrows, giving you a little bit more shape with very little effort. Just make sure that the surface you're putting it onto is dry. That's my biggest tip really for that one. Okay, so going in with the eyeliner, this is my favorite, um, it's Inglot. Um, I actually keep the tin foil on the top um, just to keep it as wet and as damp as possible because they do dry out gel liners in general. This is the brilliant Trish McAvoy brush. It is a great tight lining brush. And if you like the effect of tight lining, then it's definitely worth the investment because it doesn't fan out, it doesn't move, it keeps its shape. It's really, really solid. And it's just a brilliant piece of kit to have. Um, you don't need too much. I'm just literally going to tip um, the top of the brush into the gel liner and then close the lid immediately, then on my hand, just backwards and forwards, making sure I'm dispersing the product properly. Now, the idea with tight lining is you're gonna get in a real intense effect across your lash line. I can't wear a thick, heavy eyeliner because my skin is too bumpy and it distorts the shape. Um, and even though my lashes are long, because that's important when you wear a thick eyeliner, you can still see the tips of your lashes. Otherwise, a heavy liquid eyeliner can actually make your eyes look closed and a little bit too heavy. Um, so I'm going to be as delicate as possible, and I'm just going to inject this colour literally along the roots of my lashes. So I'm just starting on the inside here, and this is a look that a lot of makeup artists do um, when we're working um, with actresses on the red carpet because it photographs beautifully, because it's one of those looks that really enhances the features, um, amplifies the features, um, but you don't really necessarily see the makeup. So you can see I'm very gently just tapping along and I'm almost tapping along the base of the lash. If you think about trying to draw a line, the line will read very quickly on your lid and then in a moment's notice, you'll be back to sort of having a uh, liquid eyeliner. So this is the beauty of this brush because I can literally just place it, place it, place it, and it just puts it where I need it. So you can see the difference now. It's all very, very subtle, but once you get the liquid liner on and then you get the mascara on, it really makes a true difference. Maybe I'll just do one eye to show you. So just really pushing that in. Then we're going to go next into the mascara and then next into the liquid. And the reason why I use two formulas is that once I've got the mascara on, I'm then going to wedge the liquid through and it just trickles very, very gradually in between the roots of all the lashes so you get that kind of proper, proper intensity. Just the shape of my eye doesn't look too high and then going down. I'm going to lift very subtly the shape of the eye along here, just here, literally like an extra millimetre, just to kind of lift it up a little bit. Um, I'm going to curl my lashes, I'm going to be using these Troy Surratt lash curlers, which I really like. They are a little bit too big for my eyes, which um, I didn't like at first. I'm not as round as I thought, but they give a really, really great effect. And I always make sure that I really concentrate, not curling the outside ones here, but really these ones here. And because of this shape, because it's not too rounded, it really does curl the lashes in the right place, though it feels a little bit big on the eyes. Okay, so now we'll go in with the mascara and we'll use the new false lash effect by Max Factor. Now this is called Raven and it's got much, much more black pigment in um, 
It also comes with a really great blue primer. Oh, I should have used that as well to show you. Um, because lots of primers are white, as you know, and sometimes the whites of those primers um, can actually make your mascara slightly off black, like mixing a little bit of white into black. So their idea was to bring in a primer or to create a primer that was blue, electric blue. It must be somewhere, here it is. And as if by magic, here it is. Um, it's an electric blue primer. Um, I'll show you on the other eye. Um, so that when you put it on, the black of your mascara becomes super, super, super rich. So it definitely makes sense and it's definitely a really great mascara and great effect. So there you go. There's the lashes, really lovely. Really lifting, voluminous lashes that aren't too thick and cloggy, which I like. Now, just for the final effect, I'll go in with my lovely Marc Jacobs beloved liner because the tip is so, so sharp. And I'm going to literally lay this on my lashes. You can hear the family in the kitchen. There we are, laying it on. You can just see how the liquid gets to the places where the gel liner can't with the delicacy of your application. And literally just watch it here because my eyes are a little bit bumpy. So not creating a line, just going in between, almost slicing. If I'm doing someone's makeup, I can almost do this effect, but I can't actually see close enough in this mirror annoyingly. But I would slice through the lashes to kind of get that effect. Lovely, one more coat of mascara before that dries and that leaves a really lovely lift and strength to the eye that kind of gives myself a little bit more of a polished, more flattering finish to my makeup. I'll quickly do the other side for you to show you. And there we go. So this lash is a little bit fuller and thicker because of the lovely blue primer that I put on. I kind of love putting that colour on actually. It takes me back to the 80s. I loved a matching blue mascara and liner, I have to say. So the lashes are a little bit fuller on this side, um, but I just really like the kind of subtlety and um, strength to this makeup, even though it doesn't really read as I'm wearing a truckload of makeup. Anyway, I hope you learned a few little bits. Looking forward to um, reading your comments below. And as always at this time, please take care. Bye for now.